Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to our update for Saturday, April 25th, 2020. You got a free pick coming up in just a moment. That'll be in Saturday soccer. We've been red hot. Taiwan baseball, we're cutting this a uh, couple of hours before Saturday's early morning games are played. But as of right now, as of about 11 p.m. Pacific time, Friday night, heading into Saturday morning, we're 3-1 and one the last six or seven days now in Taiwan baseball and a perfect 4-0 and oh in soccer since last Saturday. We cashed a 2-0 and oh sweep on Friday, so we're going to look to keep it going on Saturday's card. In fact, right now, over at DocSports.com, or I should say it'll be posted at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, I will have Saturday's first top-level play that I've released so far this soccer season. And again, we've been finding the going really well, and we've been cashing for us, and of course, for those who have jumped on board, which I do appreciate, uh, on the pitch, whether it be Nicaragua or Belarus. And on Saturday, I've got my first seven-star play on the pitch. It's a night game on Saturday night. Both of the Nicaraguan games are uh, taking the field at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, so plenty of time to grab that seven-star play. Also also on the same report, I'm going to post a play for Sunday's card. You're going to get both the Saturday night play and the Sunday play in soccer. That's a Belarus play on Sunday. You'll get them both on the same report, led by the first seven-star play we've had this soccer season. And again, we're going to look to go to 5-0 and since last Saturday in soccer. Now, as far as Taiwan baseball, uh, highly doubt I'm going to be involved in Sunday's games, just looking at how the schedule has played out. And of course, we've yet to see Saturday's games, and cutting this a couple of hours uh, before the Saturday morning morning games get underway. Hopefully the next time we come to you will be at least four and one with the last five Taiwan games. Uh, and speaking of the next time I come to you, it'll probably be Monday afternoon. I mean, keep checking back. And if you uh, click on the subscription uh, button, then you will know, obviously, as soon as we post another video. But I'm assuming it's going to be Monday afternoon. Here's why. I'm going to give you a real quick rundown on what we think about the draft through the first round on this report, plus a free pick in Saturday soccer. Uh, but on Monday, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to grade them all on Monday morning and then Monday afternoon we'll kick out our grades for the NFL draft. We'll also look to resume our NFL divisional previews. We've got one more team to go in the NFC East then we'll wrap up the NFC and that would be the Philadelphia Eagles preview and now we'll be able to tie in what these teams did in the draft. So one more in the NFC that would be the Eagles and then we jump into the AFC and we'll get the whole AFC to go. So a lot to talk about over the next several days. Uh, but let's start before I get to that by reminding you uh, you can still get that six dollar free account over at DocSports.com if you've never yet been a member. What you do is you click on that link below the video and uh, you sign up for a free. You don't have to sign up. You just take care of it yourself. So click on the link below the video. Get set up for your first free $60 account. You can turn around and use those free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages or anybody else over at DocSports.com. All right, let's get into a real quick recap of the opening round of the NFL draft, which by the way, I felt the opening round went without a hitch they did a fantastic job considering the situation obviously for the Cincinnati Bengals you did the right thing uh, with Joe Burrow obviously at the top coming off arguably the best football season college level we've ever seen a plus they also did well in other areas we'll talk about that in a bit Washington Redskins you know I'm not so sure it's an a plus I think it is we kind of talked about the skins on our thumbnail uh, of their upcoming season and spoke about that there's more talent that they're being given credit for on defense maybe Chase Young can fit right in and get nine or ten sacks throughout the course of his rookie year. I know the downgrade on him by some people, and I think they're overstretching a bit, is saying that he's a little, little light below the waist, little, you know, his legs are a little thin, that kind of stuff. I'm not sure I'm buying that. Uh, I give them probably an A- minus for Chase Young. Uh, the Detroit Lions, I don't think they needed to dr uh, draft Jeff Okuda, the corner out of Ohio State, with the third pick, but they did. I'm not going to be too hard on them. I like Okuda for the most part, so I would say a B+. Plus. New York Giants then went with Andrew Thomas, the offensive of tackle out of Georgia. Got to like that for the Giants, no doubt about it. I thought Miami did well by getting Tua. I know there's the knock on Tua with the, um, the, the fact that he could be injury prone, but I really do like Tua, so going fifth, pretty solid. And by the way, there were a whole heck of a lot of, heck of, a lot of bets on uh, Tua going with the fourth pick. I should say going after the fourth pick uh, at William Hill Sportsbooks, for instance, and uh, the betters cashed that one when he went fifth to Miami. 
As far as the charges are concerned, I know a lot of people are giving this an A as far as the grade, talking about Justin Herbert, the quarterback for Oregon. I'm kind of like this. I, I don't think it's a bad draft by any uh, stretch of the imagination. I think it's more of a B than an A. Uh, Justin Herbert, extremely smart. I just don't know if he's got the arm strength uh, to be able to do what he needs to do at the next level, but extremely smart, so I'm not going to be shocked if he goes out and has a nice career uh, with the Chargers. Carolina Panthers, they took uh, Derek Brown out of Auburn, the defensive tackle. I do like that. They needed uh, to get somebody up front, that front side seven and uh, they did get Auburn's uh, Derek Brown so a nice pick there that's an A grade. Arizona gets Isaiah Simmons linebacker out of Clemson no doubt an A grade there really like Isaiah Simmons I think he'll fit into the mix well in the desert. Jacksonville Jaguars went out and got CJ Henderson the corner out of Florida uh, listen they need corner help there's no doubt about it they need a lot of help not just CJ Henderson I'll give them a B on that. Uh, Jedrick Wills out of Alabama offensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns I know the Browns fans uh, we're pretty happy for the most part about this I'll give them a a B plus on that one. Uh, Makai Becton for, from Louisville, the offensive tackle to the Jets. And I know right away everybody sees what he's done. I talked about it the other day. The guy's a monster on the field at the collegiate level. I worry about the fact, uh, is he going to blow up as far as get a little bit too big? I mean, the guy comes in about 6'7", 370. He's a monster. He has the potential to be an all pro. Uh, I'll give the Jets an A minus on that only because, I don't know, is Becton going to be able to be disciplined enough? No reason to think he won't be, but he's just a big dude, man. So we'll see how he plays out over his first couple of seasons in the NFL. Henry Ruggs the third. He goes from Alabama to the Las Vegas Raiders. I never thought I'd say that in my lifetime. And I've been in Vegas since I was a teenager. But uh, Henry Ruggs goes to the Raiders. Uh, B plus. I, I know he's a lightning quick speedster at wide receiver. But I don't believe he was the best wide receiver, uh, certainly in the opening round. They went and got him, though. We'll see. Tampa Bay, Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle, Iowa. Give that a solid B plus with Tristan Wirfs. I think he's going to fit in well. Uh, the Niners traded up and uh, tr had that trade with the Buccaneers, by the way, and Japan Kinlaw, defensive tackle out of South Carolina. I give that a solid A grade, maybe an A minus on Kinlaw. Uh, Jerry Judy, who I thought was going to be the first wide receiver taken in the draft, actually went to the Denver Broncos, 15th pick overall. I like Judy. We'll see if he can get the job done. I think he's an outstanding standing wide receiver. I thought he would have been better off in San Francisco, to tell you the truth, but uh, Denver also needed him, so I think he'll do well there. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, I'll give him a B for A.J. Terrell, the uh, corner out of Clemson. Dallas Cowboys went out and got C.D. Lamb. I, mean, I don't think you can miss there. I think that's an A, solid A, maybe even an A-plus, to be able to get C.D. Lamb with a 17th pick in the opening round. I thought he was going to go around 14th. He fell a couple of spots. Dallas pounced. Now, here's what I'm not crazy about. Miami uh, in the draft with the Steel, excuse me, in the trade with the Steel Steelers, they drafted 18th. They got Austin Jackson out of SC. Uh, listen, I know you got to protect Tua up front. I just think that they could have, you know, drafted Austin Jackson later on. I really do. Uh, Las Vegas Raiders drafted once again, 19th. Damon Arnett, corner out of Ohio State. Uh, boy, I, I thought there were other guys who were better. Jeff Gladney, Travon Diggs, to name a couple that I thought would have been better in that spot. So I'm going to give them a C plus on that pick. Jacksonville Jaguars went 20th from the Rams, and they went out and got Clavon Chase on the uh, LSU outside linebacker. Absolutely a steal at 20. Uh, that's an A plus. Philadelphia, Jalen Rieger, the wide receiver out of TCU. I'm a little surprised here. Uh, I know the Eagles did need some receiver help. Alshon Jeffrey always seems to be hurt. Deshaun Jackson hurting last year. I mean, they just had nobody to throw to. I think there were better receivers at that spot than Rieger out of TCU. In fact, I was kind of surprised that as many Big 12 players went in the opening round as did. Uh, Minnesota from the Bills, 22nd pick. Justin Jefferson, wide receiver LSU. Nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, I think Justin Jefferson uh, should have been higher than a number 22. So I think the Vikings got a nice uh, draft pick there, and I give him an A for that. Chargers went out for the Patriots at 23 and got Kenneth Murray, linebacker Oklahoma. Solid A grade for the Chargers. Saints and Cesar Ruiz from uh, Michigan can play center, can play guard. Cesar Ruiz, let me pronounce it correctly. Uh, I thought that was a B plus. I, I like Cesar Ruiz going here at t the 24th pick. In fact, uh, I kind of weighed whether he was going to go late first round or early second, but as I got closer to the draft, I thought he would go late first round, and he did. Uh, San Francisco from the Vikings, they drafted 25th. They went out and got Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State, wide receiver. And there you go, San Francisco, I thought they might go for Jerry Judy earlier in the draft, but because they didn't, because wide receivers were deep, uh, they were able to get Ayuk, and I think he'll fit in well with that squad. Remember, they lost Emmanuel Sanders in the offseason. 
Uh, Green Bay Packers. Okay, everybody knows and everybody agrees this was a weird pick from the Texans via the Dolphins, 26th pick. And they go out and they draft Jordan Love, quarterback at Utah State. Now, here's a couple of things. First of all, I thought Jordan Love would go in that 17 to 21 range. Once he was passed after 21st, I wasn't sure if anybody was going to take him. I certainly did not expect Green Bay to take Jordan Love. This is not NFL 2000. This is NFL 2020 and beyond. And you don't use first round draft picks on quarterbacks who are going to be understudies uh, to your current quarterback for at least two or three years. That would have to be the case in all likelihood with Jordan Love. I would have loved to see Aaron Rodgers get a wide receiver in the opening round to deal with and to use as he's never had an opening round skill position player drafted since he's been quarterback in Green Bay. Uh, I just thought this was an odd pick. So, gosh, I, I hate to do this because I like Jordan Love, but I think that's a D plus because of who he was drafted by. Uh, same goes with Jordan Brooks, linebacker out of Texas. Texas Tech Seattle with that 27th pick. I thought that was a bad spot to, uh, to, to, to draft Jordan Brooks for the Seahawks with all their needs. I thought Baltimore is fantastic in the draft so far through the first few rounds. Baltimore, Patrick Queen, linebacker LSU, 28th pick, solid A, maybe an A+. Listen, I know they didn't go after a linebacker in free agency. They got one here, pretty good one, I think is going to be uh, Patrick Queen out of LSU. Love the way Baltimore drafted. Uh, Tennessee, they went and got Isaiah Wilson, offensive tackle Georgia, solid B for the Titans. I thought Miami, again, they go out and they get a corner from Auburn. Uh, they get the draft pick from Green Bay, and I thought that was a B- minus at best. Minnesota from the 49ers with a second-to-last pick in the opening round chose Jeff Gladney, corner TCU. A-, minus. I'll give him that. I thought Jeff Gladney would go higher. I thought the other TCU player we mentioned earlier wasn't going to be a first-rounder. thought Gladney would go higher. I think Minnesota's got to feel real happy about getting with that 31st pick. And Clyde Edwards-Alaire, running back of LSU, going to the Chiefs. Can't fall that at all. A minus, I'll call it for the Kansas City Chiefs there. So we'll talk about the other rounds. We'll talk about the entire draft when we do a Monday afternoon video. I uh, want to get to our free pick. It goes at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on a Saturday. It is Belarus soccer. It is Shakhtar against Dynamo Brest. And I'm playing the draw on this one. It's right around plus 230, give or take a few cents. So shop around. But these teams have played to a draw in five of the last six meetings. And both clubs own strong long-term Premier League records as far as taking minimal losses. You look at Shakhtar, they're no pushover away from home. Four draws, two wins, two losses in their eight roadies. So draws have been the way to go for them on the road. Their road games are typically low scoring, by the way, somewhat close to the vest when they play these roadies. Dinamo Brest off to a slower start than expected. Nice year last year, slow sluggish start this year, uh, but they're still stingy on the defensive end. You got to be able to beat this team in, in their matchups because they're not going to give up much on the defensive end unless you earn it. I expect another tight affair between these two, so I'm going to play Shakhtar, Dinamo Brest. It's uh, game number 2-1-1-4-3-9. 2-1-1-4-3-9 to play to a draw, plus 230. That's our free play on Saturday. And again, it goes at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And don't forget, we've got that big seven-star play from Saturday Soccer available 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the game goes at 9 p.m. Eastern. There's two games at 9 p.m. Eastern in Nicaragua. One of those sides happens to be our seven-star play. Plus, on the same report, you're going to get a Sunday play uh, from the Belarus League. We'll look to go 2-0 with these plays and push and extend our run to 6-0 and uh, going back to last Saturday. Hope you jump on board. That's going to do it for me for this report. Uh, good. Uh, probably back on Monday afternoon uh, when we can really recap and grade the draft. So be sure to check back for that. If you like the videos, click on that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Saturday in the win column. We'll be right back here no later than Monday afternoon. Have a great one.